Good morning, Nick Hayward here, founder of Prophesied Legacy Ministries and the visionary of Cornerstone Fellowship. I've been talking to you a lot lately about ordinary people. You know, ordinary people, that's the title of our talk through the text series that we're doing where we're looking at the lives of the apostles and just seeing how ordinary people had encounters with Jesus and they did some extraordinary things. So I have a question for you. Do you know someone that's very fact-driven, very by the book, uh, very one plus one equals two, and there ain't no way around it? If you know someone like this, you know a Philip. Uh, Philip was one of the apostles, but one thing that we know about Philip is Philip knew all the protocol. He knew all the procedures. He would have sort of been like the office manager out of the group. He was the one that knew what the law said, what the protocol said, what the procedure said. And if you weren't following the procedures to the T, Philip had a problem. So Philip, you know, there are a lot of people in this world that are like Philip. But one thing that Philip did that I think is pretty cool that we should take notice to. Um, Philip was following John the Baptist uh, as John the Baptist was teaching in the wilderness. And basically, he was waiting on the Messiah. You know, at a time, some people thought that John the Baptist was the Messiah and John was like, nope, not me. I'm preparing the way for the one that's to come. But when Philip encountered Jesus, he was so overtaken and overjoyed. What was the first thing he did? He went to tell his friend Nathaniel. Philip being such a logical guy, Philip's thought process was Nathaniel. We found the Messiah. But in actuality, the Messiah found him but philip of course is looking at this from a natural standpoint the one plus one equals two i saw him there he was so i had to be the one to find him because remember that's the way philip likes to think but the example of what philip did with nathaniel is a perfect example of evangelism philip was so passionate about who he found and what he found that he raced back to share the news with his good friend so Friendship is a good ground for evangelism because amongst friends, there's a love and there's a trust. So what better place and what better people to share good things with than your friends? But that's a whole conversation for another day. Um, we know about the feeding of the 5,000. So there's 5,000 people present and Jesus is saying, so Philip, who can we do it? Can it be done? Jesus already knew it could be done, but he just wanted to test Philip's faith. And what did Philip say? I'm looking around. I don't see no food. Nah, not going to work. But what did Andrew do? Andrew found a boy that had a couple of fish and like five loaves of bread. Took him to Jesus because Andrew was operating in faith. Philip was operating in his logic. So the lesson that we need to learn is never let your logic outweigh and, and restrain your faith. Logic might not be able to do it, but faith, if you believe in it, can always make it happen. So Philip followed Jesus. He was taught by Jesus. Philip was even present when Jesus turned the water into wine. So you would think Philip's faith would be pretty strong and it would be like, oh, I saw him do it. I know he can do it. But in the upper room on uh, Jesus' last night with the disciples before the crucifixion, uh, he was giving them some pretty specific instructions on things to do. And Philip, being Philip, the guy of facts, he said, like, Master, show us the Father, and that'll be sufficient for us. So all this time Philip has spent with Jesus, Philip is still requiring further proof. Philip needs that logical progression so he can put it on paper and say, so I saw him do this and this and this, and then I asked him this and he told me this, so this has to be the way. Again, he's relying on his logic and not trusting his faith. But the beautiful thing about this situation is Jesus knew he was headed to the cross the next day. He knew he was no longer gonna be here to teach the disciples. And he also saw that they weren't quite so ready. But what did he do? He told them that once he was gone, he was going to send a comforter, which would be his Holy Spirit, that would empower them to do the great works that they had to do. Now, Jesus could have been like, I taught y'all for a minute and y'all still don't get it. You know what I'm going to do? 
forget it. Cancel the mission. Let me find some new people in these last few hours that got it together, that understand, and they can do the work. That's not what he did. Jesus took these ordinary people that were filled with doubt. Jesus took these ordinary people that fled the scene when he needed them the most. Jesus took these ordinary people that had no formal training, but he taught them and then he equipped them with his spirit and allowed them to do great things. So let us think about Philip and let us always remember, never let your logic restrain your faith. Thank you so much for taking this time to listen. Um, I hope you'll join us for our talk through the text as we discuss this in greater detail. We'd love to have you there. Share the video and come and join us. Be blessed.